Sorry it is taking so long for me to get back to finishing the next parts of this video on how the world works. In the first part of the video I talked about how oil is basically the main physical power in our world today, uh, which drives our entire society and is indispensable. And money is traditionally a store of power. Uh, traditionally money took power to create something like food or livestock or precious metals. Um, and it was an efficient way to in effect store power and transport power easily. Uh, today, however, with fiat currencies, uh, money is more of a mental construct and fiat currencies, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, fiat means a decree of force which transfers power from people who are forced to use the money into the money and ultimately to the people who are able to create the money. So in our society, the people who create the money are banking institutions. Uh, other societies, the government itself creates the money but for us, you can see who ultimately has power in our society by who is allowed to create the money. Not even counting euros and other fiat currencies, in US dollars alone, banking institutions create nearly a trillion dollars per year. And when you create a trillion dollars, you in effect transfer one trillion dollars worth of power. It's simply a mental construct. It's not as if a large industry had to create a trillion dollars worth of actual value. Now it gets terribly messy when you start to delve into who are the winners and losers in this transfer of power, but first I think it's important just to grasp the magnitude of what's happening. It's nearly eight thousand dollars per US worker annually. It shapes our entire economy and life in the United States more than almost anyone can grasp. And I think a lot of people, including myself in the past, have gone over some of the obvious winners in this transfer of power. The banking institutions themselves that create the money and get to lend it at interest are a very obvious uh, winner. And then large corporations who have primary access to credit and can are more savvy uh, borrowers, also another uh, obvious winner. The obvious victims in this fraud are the people who are forced to hold the money, which would be retirement funds, individual savers, and then ultimately when no one can save money effectively, everyone has to go to the entities which create the money, the banks, in order to take out loans to buy anything of significance and you create a society of indentured servants. Now I think people who are paying attention have become more aware of those general facts in recent years, but what few people seem to recognize is again the immensity of this transferred power and secondly the benefit to America in general at the expense of the rest of the world when we are able to force the rest of the world to use dollars and we do that in numerous ways by forcing OPEC to sell oil only in dollars by propping up regimes throughout the third world which buy US bonds. For America we run what amounts to a giant counterfeiting operation when we can create one trillion dollars a year and foist that on the rest of the world we are in effect taking a trillion dollars worth of power from the rest of the world and transferring it to America. Now that transfer may be very inequitably distributed, but generally America gains enormously. And this is an incredibly unethical thing. And like most unethical things, it will eventually come back to haunt us and it is already destroying our society. You may wonder why we're able to continually run trade deficits, why we have lost our entire manufacturing base. It's because we have this enormous counterfeiting operation which transfers a trillion dollars in power to our country a year at the expense of actual producers. It has made our society very unproductive because we're able to steal instead of produce. And finally when looking at the big picture there's another aspect to Western economies that few people seem fully aware of and that is the degree to which most facets of our economy are controlled by monopolies behind the scenes. And again, although that may often be a detriment to the average worker in America, it causes a, a great gain to Americans and Europeans in general when our monopolies are able to go out and dominate those market sectors throughout the third world. And once again, we often use puppet governments to assist in this. And these monopolies are at work in the West as well. What you'll see in most mature segments of the economy in, in the West is that large monopolies survive not so much by innovating themselves as by having primary access to credit and buying up smaller competitors, especially during downturns in the business cycle. So it ultimately ensures that large corporations with closest ties to the banking and financial industries are able to maintain a partial monopoly over just about every mature segment in the Western economy. Now I've been treating everything with a really broad brush here. I mean you could 
study this for years. I'm just giving an alternate viewpoint for some people who may not have even contemplated anything outside the paradigm of us having a true free market and uh, not stealing an enormous amount from the rest of the world. If you start to study independently, you'll see that on a macro scale, we don't really have a free market in the West. The banking industry is the ultimate source of power, and we steal an enormous amount from the rest of the world. That's why we spend as much in the United States as the rest of the world combined on, on military interventions. Now, in the long term, this isn't sustainable, and in fact, it's processes like this that cause every empire to eventually become corrupt and fail. But on an individual level, I think that all you can do, both ethically and for your own good, is to detach yourself as much as possible from a system based on unfree practices and exploitation. So sorry this video didn't really cover anything that I haven't gone over in the past seven years often in much more detail, but I kind of wanted to get it out there in a block as part of this series on the drives which uh, move society forward. In the next video I'll go more into collective consciousness, which I believe is a higher level of drive uh, above the mental constructs of, of our economy. If you like these videos, please uh, forward them on because they're not very searchable on YouTube and uh, otherwise I feel like I'm sort of preaching to the choir. Thank you.